Hey guys, Nebris here, and welcome to the team week two team builder. I am off to a great start. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna restart this. That's that's just the sort of mood I'm in right now. This is the week two team builder for the PCL. This week uh, we're going up against Matt. I think it's O'Shea. I can't pronounce words, so sorry, Matt, if I got your name wrong. Matt and the Montreal Milotics. Last week we took a tough loss to die. And, you know, reviewing that game, I did not do as poorly as I thought I did. Actually, no. I mean, I did do poorly. But I identified where I did poorly. And I think if I played better, could have won that. I prepped well, but during that match, I made a very crucial mistake in sacking Rotom. To Halucha. I think if I chose to sack Mandibuzz instead, I could have actually won that. And the reason I made that mistake is because I was really tilted from some failed early game predictions that completely subverted my strategy. Because I lost Mew early on without getting up the spikes that I had hoped would be up for that match. And that just like devastated me. I got very defeatist. And I made a big mistake of switching Rotom in. I mean, I like, strategically, I thought, okay, if he Brave Birds, I don't take any damage at all. And I force him out. But he wasn't going to Brave Bird. He was Swords Dance. So I should I should have sent in uh, my Mandibuzz instead. But <clears throat> if I play smarter, I probably could have won. But, I mean, he's Jellicent is still something very difficult I would have had to play around. And same with right barrier, but that is in the past. We are going to have to move on to the future. We are up against a very solid team this week. This thing, okay, he's got a Dragapult. This thing should be an S tier poke, I swear, but it is not. It's a tier one, and it is ridiculously strong and ridiculously fast. And it can be either a physical attacker or a special attacker. It could hide behind substitutes very well. Uh, it's got infiltrator, so it prevents you from subbing up on it. It's gonna be, it's gonna be rough. I think it's gonna be a special attacker, um, just based on my team composition and what it can do with like. A specs, uh, it like if it if it runs specs Draco Meteor, I'm I'm pretty much losing a Pokemon every time it clicks that, so I'm not super psyched about that. Um, yeah, he's got amazing hazard, just all around hazard game. He's got Roserade. You know, I wish I had a, a thing to put up for his team, but I do not. Maybe I'll do that next week. He's got Roserade, Piloswine, and Carcol, and Espeon. All of those are involved in the Hazard game. Roserade can set spikes and toxic spikes. Piloswine can set up rocks. Carcol can both set up rocks and spin away things, which is going to be unpleasant. And lastly, Espeon has Magic Bounce, so I need to worry about that coming in anytime I'm thinking about setting up uh, some Hazards of my own. So I, I really cannot rely on hazards the way I was hoping to last week, although I didn't even succeed at that. Um, yeah. Uh, next up, he's got Rotom Wash. That thing is a brutal pivot that I'm going to have a very tough time bringing down. Uh, I got a counter in mind with uh, Roserade here, and if it's not Scarf, this thing can get some chip on it as well. Um, it's some some shenanigans to help hopefully bring it down, but it's gonna be really tough because I can't I can't use my like water type to take his water move or a ground type to take his electric move because if I guess wrong I'm losing a poke and I don't want to be put in that position. Um, there's that his Dynamax Pokemon is Surfetched, which is the new far fetched evolution. It's uh, It's got the fighting, flying-type move coverage. 
Now, it's, it's only a fighting type, but it's got, like, flying-type moves, which means it can get, like, plus one attack, plus one speed with the Dynamax moves. So I gotta, I gotta be careful around that. <sighs> um, I have a few ways of dealing with it. Uh, namely, you know, Will-O-Wisp on Rotom and some Psychic-type moves. Uh, next up... Okay, so he's got Umbreon and Snorlax. They are some really nasty tanks. Um, I think for sure he brings Umbreon, particularly a foul play Umbreon, because that thing, just that one Pokemon, can shut down my two best sweepers in Mew and or Dragon Dance Mew and Dragon Dance Gyarados. So I, I'm not even bringing either of them, despite how much I wanted to. Like I originally had both of them being Dragon Dance Sweepers, and then I'm like, oh, Umbreon shuts it down completely. Um, what else he's got? I think the last Pokemon, I might be forgetting one, but the last one is Morgrem, which is the unevolved version of, oh my god, I've forgotten what it is. Nope. It's not coming to me either, and it's not gonna come because I'm under so much stress from this video. But there's no way I could possibly think of its name. No, it's it's the final of all form of Impidem. I can get the pre-evolution. That's how your brain works. You can definitely get that anytime you want it. The evolution, though. Oh God, what's it called? You know, what? I give up. I'm not gonna. I'm, we're not gonna do it. Whatever Morgrim evolves into. <laughs> um, it's got Prankster. It can do a lot of nasty things. <coughs> I'm a little bit concerned about it, but I mean, I kind of think he doesn't bring it, but it's a wild card if he does. But I, I have some counters to it. Um, so for our team, we're going to start off with our Dynamax Captain Steelix here. Uh, this thing, just based on what my opponent can bring, he's pretty heavy in the special attacking realm. So we're going to be bringing a Max Spadef Assault Vest version. Uh, body press for that plus one attack, and so I can break through Snorlax and Umbreon. Crunch deals with uh, Espeon and Dragapult. I'm pretty sure I don't one-hit kill those. I leave them super weak. Uh, Psychic Fangs is for dealing with Roserade and with... Um, <coughs> uh, I've already lost my voice. And with uh, Surfetched, one second... Yeah, voice is already going. Maybe I'm gonna have to shorten this a bit. I don't, I don't feel like talking too much. Um, we've got self destruct. Uh, when it becomes a Dynamax, this thing doesn't actually kill yourself. But once I leave Dynamax, I, I can probably go out with a bang. And this is also a pretty strong, hard hitting Dynamax attack. Ooh. All right, so. Last week I used this thing as a direct counter to um to the Galarian Obstagoon. There, there's no other Obstagoon. You know what I mean. Um this week it's not really meant to directly counter anything, but it can pretty much come in on anything and just start clicking buttons and doing some massive damage. I do have to worry about, you know, body pressing into a a switch into Dragapult, but that that's about it. Same with self destruct, especially if it's I'm self destructing. That that would just be sad to see. Um, next up, we've got Mew. Again, I originally wanted to run a Dragon Dance set with um, you know, Play Rough and oh, Crunch, not Crunch, something like that. Darkest Lariat and uh, Psychic Fangs. That's not going to work out. Instead, we're running a Choice Specs version of it. It's got just enough speed, well, with a modest nature, to outspeed a non-scarfed Rotom. So that's good. Got Psy Shock uh, for the same things this has Psychic Fangs for. Got Dazzling Gleam, so I can catch, um, I can catch any, catch what's his name, Vagapult in on a switch. 
I can also do a little bit of chip to Umbreon, which I think is a very likely thing to come in. So, you know, even if I get some Dazzling Gleam chip on Umbreon, that's that's pretty good. It's not going to be a two-hit KO. Even with modest choice specs, it's maybe a three-hit. Maybe. Like, that's how nasty Umbreon is. Um, I also have to worry about Espeon coming in on, like, Psy Shock or something. Um, Dazzling Gleam should hit it for about half, which is, um, really what I'm aiming for. If I can just get half damage on it, I can two-hit KO it, and that'll be that for his ability to stop me from getting hazards up. Um... Get it. He might. He still might remove them with a Carcoal, but I don't know if he brings Carcoal, and I doubt he brings Deep Fog. Is uh, Surfetched? I didn't mention that earlier. Surfetched gets Deep Fog, but it's it's the Dynamax. He's not. Um, we've got Leaf Storm. This thing hits Pile of Swine and Rotom Wash. Super effective, and it 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 a Specs Modest Leaf Storm just does a lot of damage to pretty much anything. And that, that's the goal with Mew, is to just bring it in and do as much damage as possible with one shot, and then, you know, send it out for something else and try to do that again many times as we um, That is my goal, uh, and I, I hope it works out. And we've got U-Turn for Momentum, um, maybe so as not to spoil the set, although it kind of hints at it a little bit. Uh, next up, we got Rotom Heat. This thing is a choice scarfer with just enough speed to outspeed um, Dragapult. Uh, we've got Shadow Ball, which can two hit KO Dra Dragapult. We've got Volt Switch, which um, hits everything pretty hard. Uh, it The only thing he has to block it is a Pile of Swine, and you kind of might not want to bring Pile of Swine in because even. You know, even if it's got thick fat, it still does not want to take, like, an overheat or anything. So maybe he'll be a bit hesitant to bring in the pile of swine. I can bolt switch pretty freely. Uh, Will-O-Wisp is there for some, you know, like, emergency uh, shutdown of an opponent. Like, let's say he's got uh, Snorlax and he's belly drummed. I'm going to have to bring this thing out, uh, bring this thing in, Will-O-Wisp, and then just, like, die just to prevent him from sweeping with that. But I don't think that'll happen. Uh, Trick can also be used as sort of a, a last-ditch uh, way of preventing a poke from setting up or from healing itself or whatever. Um, but the real method I'm going to be using to deal with, like, set up Umbreon or set up Norlax is our Passimian over here. And I'm going to take another quick break. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I've been coughing all morning. Not very good. Um, so this thing has just barely enough speed to outspeed. Uh, uh, Morgrem. It's got Taunt for shutting down any setup shenanigans. It's got Bulk Up just to, you know, give it some extra attack, extra defense if I need it. Uh, knock Off uh, is actually huge in this match. My opponent does not want to be knocked off because I think his items can be pretty important to him. Um, particular and it particularly does a bit of damage to Espeon and to Dragapult, and those are you know Dragapult. It's such a wild card that I I can really I really hope that I can get a knockoff against it. Um, that'll be the play of the game if it happens, but I, I'd seriously doubt. Maybe maybe he's like okay he's he's about to use a fighting type move against me. I'll go into Dragapult and I'll hit him with a knockoff. That would be fantastic if that happened. Don't think it will, though. Um, we've got Drain Punch and Metronome uh, as a combo. This can keep me alive in, set, in like, it sort of functions as a setup attack that can just keep getting stronger and stronger with the Drain Punches, keep healing myself, and maybe my opponent doesn't realize what's going on. He thinks he'll survive another Drain Punch, and boom, the Metronome kicks in. And he loses a poke that he didn't think he'd lose. Um, again, uh, last week I lost because I should have recognized that I needed to keep my Rotom Heat alive. Uh, just because it dealt so well with the rest of his team. 
this uh, Passimian, I need it to stay alive as long as Umbreon or Snorlax is alive. This is pretty much my only way of dealing with it, aside from like, uh, Rotom Heat with Trick or Will-O-Wisp. So I need to be very intelligent about how I play this thing. Next up, we have Saloon, the Mandibuzz. Um, we're running Max Bedef Heavy Duty Boots. This thing is our hazard removal. Um, we're trying to get hazards up, but we're not going to be as good at it as my opponent. So maybe early on, I'm going to need to, you know, defog them away. Uh, this thing has knockoff. Again, knockoff is going to play a critical role here. We've got U-turn as well for momentum. And lastly, we got roost. Um, roost just to, you know, keep myself alive. This thing can take, I think this thing can come in on a specs, uh, Draco Meteor from Dragapult and survive it. Like, I think it does half, a little over half. I could just, uh, you know, roost when it, whenever he either switches or, you know, keeps doing it, which would be dumb on his part. Uh, so I don't think I'll do that. But that is basically my special wall. <laughs> um, also a decent switch into, like, a Hydro Pump, but not great. Uh, and if the, their Rotom isn't scarfed, I don't want to have to deal with that. Um, deal with being volt switched on because i think that just does i want to say 30 to 35 or so i should really uh look that up because it's gonna be important to know um so yeah i don't want it, to it'll tell me if it's scarfed or not but i don't want to i don't want to take that sort of damage because this thing is going to be a critical pivot for me and i've got to keep it alive as best i can Ooh, last but not least we have prickles the Rosselia. So originally this is going to be Gyarados, but yeah, foul play Umbreon just walls it. So I don't, I don't, it wasn't a good move. Snorlax does the same with like Thunder Punch. So instead I went with the Rosselia, who's actually pretty good. Um, I'm making it a mostly specially defensive wall. It's got a Violite. It'll pretty much always be running a Violet. It's got a little bit of speed, because it's the same speed tier as Umbreon and Surfetched. Um, getting a little bit of Spatak as well. That um, we'll, we'll talk about that later, and the rest in HP. Um, Calm Nature, more Spadef for the Violet to boost. Uh, this thing is a pretty interesting poke, um, not going to lie. I came up with it at the last minute as a Gyarados replacement, and I'm I'm very happy with it. You've got Leaf Storm for Pile of Swine and Rotom. Uh, basically, same thing as with Mew, but you know, a stab this time. Uh, I think it Oko's Rotom, and I think it Oko's Pile of Swine, but you know, different versions of those folks could probably survive it. Uh, next up is Shadow Ball. This thing is the key, because if my opponent has an Espeon, um. This thing invites Espeon in, like, if you have an Espeon and someone sends out a Roselia, what are you going to do? You're going to send out your Espeon, because if it spikes or toxic spikes, you get to bounce them back, and then you're in a position to just click Psyshock and kill it. So, hopefully, when I get this thing in, the first thing I'll do is just click Shadow Ball, and this uh, special attack investment is just barely enough to do... Pretty much guarantee a two-hit KO against a non-invested Espeon. If it's invested, it's going to be a bit harder, but it's not the end of the world. Um, so that's what Shadow Ball does. Yeah, I mean, it can also do damage to pretty much anything neutrally, um, and it hits Dragapult pretty hard, too. It can actually survive a Dragapult Fire Blast, I believe. Specs Dragapult Fire Blast. I don't know how much it survives by, but I can get a Shadow Ball off if need be on that. Um, extra Sensory is there for going up against an opposing Roserade. So like maybe uh, his Roserade is setting up spikes. I can just bring this in, sop up those spikes, and then click Extra Sensory um, to do mad damage to it. Uh, it also serves as like another check to... Um, Duck, Surfetched, 
if for some reason the Surfetched isn't running any speed. Although, what I think is going to happen is Surfetch would just kill this thing in one hit, but... Um, it's got spikes over Toxic Spikes because, you know, my opponent is probably bringing a Roserade. For me to bring Toxic Spikes just invites it in to set up his own spikes, whereas if I just lay down spikes, he can't remove them with his Roserade, so I think Spikes is the way to go. Um, also, Toxic doesn't really... I mean, it, it does do, does put in work, but um, I think I'd rather Spikes is my my two cents on the matter. Um, so that's it. Um, my strategy this week is reliable damage. I want to be able to damage my opponent reliably. That's going to be so huge for me. Um, my opponent does have immunities, and he does have some good walls, but I can still, you know, get that damage done with hazards, and I can still get that damage done with some decent middle ground moves. Um, and just, you know, a hard-hitting choice specs Dazzling Gleam. Not many things wants to take that. Same thing with Leaf Storm. Same thing with Psy Shock. Um, what else? Um, momentum. Momentum's going to be key. I got three U or two U-turns and a Volt Switch. Uh, that's going to be pretty nice to have. Amanda Buzz, again, I said it before, he's going to be a very important pivot. Uh, we need to keep him healthy as possible. And again, I cannot lose Passimian until Umbreon and Snorlax are dealt with. So, learned a lot from last week's uh, mistakes. And I really think I have a good shot at winning this. Uh, so stay tuned. The battle will be coming up tomorrow. And next week, we are getting two brand new Pokemon for a team. Because uh, in the last... Uh, Last two weeks, I've noticed certain problems with my team, and I've sort of figured out how I want to go about correcting them. So, that's going to be it for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with Matchup.